we need to arrest. That's the only thing, and we're going to arrest under our government. We're going to run this government, by the way, the way we're running EFF. The state will remain, be loyal to the state. When you come to EFF events or offices or whatever project the EFF execute, you will not find anyone running around sweating, not knowing what they are doing. Everything is orderly. Everybody knows my job is to do this from there I go home. And where there is corruption, those people must go to jail, irrespective of who they are. You know we had reached an agreement with the ANC to expropriate land without compensation. Put that motion in Parliament as the EFF. The motion got passed. We went all over South Africa. Majority of South Africans who made submissions, who came to public participation, said expropriate this land without compensation. The ANC, on the if of amending that constitution, developed a cold feet. We need leadership and decisive leadership. Because those are the people of eating now. They don't have time and the patience to wait. So you need a leadership that, is, that has got vision, that will protect the state-owned enterprises and make sure they are led by men and women with the necessary capacity. And where there is corruption, those people must go to jail, irrespective of who they are. So the problem with us is that for the past 30 years, I think we only jailed uh, Tony and Gain for discount. <laughs> But with so much corruption, only one name can come up. Corruption is one of the things that uh, collapse state-owned companies. Yes. What is going to be different under a coalition that you might be part of if you are uh, successful in the upcoming elections? Well, you need to professionalize the civil service. You need people like Mkwanazi, the commissioner of police in KZN, who knows that when I'm a policeman, I do police work. I'm not here to impress politicians, whether a politician likes it or not. So we need people who are professionals, who are going to say, this is my responsibility. I love the country. And everybody you employ, you must give them the constitution and the flag and tell them this is what you must be loyal to. Not these other shenanigans. They are here to live. Every five years, there's going to be someone. The state will remain. Be loyal to the state. We need to arrest. That's the only thing, and we're going to arrest under our government. We're going to run this government, by the way, the way we're running EFF. When you come to EFF events or offices or whatever project the EFF execute, you will not find anyone running around sweating, not knowing what they are doing. Everything is orderly. Everybody knows my job is to do this from there I go home. We need leadership and decisive leadership. Okay. Can I ask, Mr. President, about the coalition talks? Mm -hmm. Please educate me. Have you started discussing with other parties uh, that you perhaps will marry up for the, co the coalition government? Uh, do you have a preference uh, for a coalition government? What would your terms be uh, for that uh, uh, negotiation and the ultimately the government? You know, we had reached an agreement with the ANC now, even before coalition, to expropriate land without compensation. Put that motion in Parliament as the EFF. The motion got passed. We went all over South Africa. Majority of South Africans who made submissions, who came to public participation, said expropriate this land without compensation. The ANC, on the if of I mean, that constitution developed a cold feet. Because it was coming from a conference that said, expropriate the land, nationalize the reserve bank, create the state-owned bank. So those are the EFF condition of expropriation of land without compensation, of industrialization and beneficiation, of fighting corruption and making education free. They say new condition that we have put there every learner in south africa is going to do mathematics and not miss literacy why give our children everything else the poor said we must not get so fairwood said why do you give an african child mathematics because they will not have they won't use it anyway he was right because 
Mathematics meant high jobs. And high jobs were reserved for whites. So you're going to learn mathematics, then what? So we ought to teach our children mathematics so that they've got the capacity to think. Mathematics helps them to expand their brain. And we don't care whether they pass it or not. Of course, we care that they pass it, but even if you don't pass, at least you did mathematics. There's no dumb cop that has done mathematics. Mathematics are for thinkers. And that's why we want our children to be thinkers. That was denied uh, from, that was denied by uh, Fairwood. ANC, instead of giving us RDP houses in 1994 and giving us food parcels and giving us all free this, they should have given us free education. 30 years now, there will not be a family that needs an RDP house. We would have built our own houses, much more beautiful houses because we'll be educated with good positions and able to pay for our own responsibilities. Mandela's problem, which he should have realized at the time, what was at the center of the oppression of our people? It was education. Apartheid was education. They said on education, separate them. What is the difference between us and Zimbabweans? Ian Smith in Zimbabwe, when he arrived, he wanted to do the same thing. But he realized he doesn't have sufficient whites to can carry that economy alone. And because he had no option, he now allowed all people of Zimbabwe, including Africans, to get same education. That's why you've got Zimbabweans being at that level, because they've never received an inferior education in their country. We're destroyed by inferior education. Okay, can I take you back to the issues of competition in, in sectors yes. of the economy? What is your idea of the role of the private sector in energy, in logistics, um, maybe even in the water sector? The private sector has got no role in the energy. I said to you, energy, uh, power stations are a national security key point. So I'm not going to entrust the future of my country in the hands of a private man called Juan Rupert, who can decide any day I'm closing my, my power station the way he closes his own kitchen. No. <laughs> the power stations and the energy cannot be in the individual rise. The same thing as water. Water is very strategic key, important issue in our economy. You cannot entrust that responsibility with an individual. That's why the manifesto of the EFF says we will own strategic means of the economy. We don't just own everything, the saloon, the spas, we don't, we don't want such things. Anything strategic must be state-led, must be state-owned. Uh, if you have a problem with us operating Prasa, I'm amenable to listen to that debate, but I'm going to own the railway lane. Because trains, these locomotives, they can be replaced at any time. If you take them, I can get them somewhere and put them there. But the day you wake up crazy and you see you are taking your railway lane out because you don't like my lemma, what, what alternative can I get? Because it will take me years to put a railway lane. Why would you entrust railway lanes in the hands of the private sector? But locomotives you can give to the private sector, there's no problem. There's a difference. I, I wouldn't think maybe... There you have it, guys. Julius Malema is usually full of these revolutionary speeches. Sometimes you wonder where he gets them from. But whatever the case is, we really hope that his wisdom transcends, you know, and really contributes to the development of Africa and in helping solving Africa's really myriad of challenges. But what do you guys think about his speech? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please share and like and subscribe because that's the way you support Kwasami as a channel, an Afrocentric channel, uh, where we try to understand um, deeper issues in African history and hopefully develop um, a collective intelligence on how we wish to build the Africa we want to see as people of Africa. See you in the next one.